Hello creatives, I'm Ari and this is Shameless Three Creative and today I have an art haul. So let's get right into it. I have items from Let's Make Art, Blick Art Supply, and Jerry's Artorama, as well as some more watercolor paints from Julia K Studios. So let's get right to it. All right, the first item I purchased was these credit color. So if you've watched any of the videos from our subscription boxes that I got credit color, I'm not really thrilled with it. However, the oil pastels in the last art haul video just weren't going on paper as well as I thought they should. So I wanted to try a brand that's a little bit more reputable and uh, that's very light fast to see if I couldn't create better results. So we'll swatch these out really quick and see how they go. Now you can get these in a tin of 10, 20, or 40. And I got the 20 tin. So these come in a nice credit color tin. Um, yeah, that one. These don't look like they're going to last that long, but that's okay. I plan to I plan to put these in a palette to use as paint. So that is my plan with them. All right, so I really like how these went on paper in the blue, which has kind of high tinting strength. You can kind of see the lines I made underneath. They went on the paper better than the Mungio or the other oil sticks that I purchased from Jerry's Artorama but I still will have to compare them or, you know, in art pieces and see how they go. I did try to mix the white with the red just to try to get a pink. That mixing didn't quite go as planned, but there's our credit color aqua sticks. I went with the sticks for a variety of colors and to be able to art studies. That's what I technically purchased these for. Credit Color has really good light fastness in at least in these art sticks. So I thought I would try them for art studies. That's the purpose that I purchased them for. So another thing I picked up from Blick was some silver ruby satin brushes. So this is a Filbert number two. This is a Filbert number four. And then this is just a number one Filbert. So I usually paint small paintings, nothing usually over a five by seven. So I and I like getting into the details. I'm also taking a class this week 
that will I will need these brushes for. Filberts are great for blending. I also picked up the Stabilo Aquarellable um, pencils. They were on paper, glass, plastic, and metal to try those for different applications. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna use them for yet, but I really want to try them for drawing and to see how they work. And then the last thing I picked up at Blick, well, I actually picked up two more things, but the Walnut, I got the Walnut Darkening Medium, but it did not arrive. I ended up getting sent the Tombow Mono Correction Tape, which, I have no idea what you would use it for, but they let me keep it for free and they're sending out my medium, but that was a little disappointing. So the other thing I picked up was the Blackwing Matte Pencils. They're about $2 per pencil, maybe just slightly more. They're a soft graphite pencil. They're supposed to be excellent for drawing. I have never tried them. I just decided that these were well known for being great for drawing, so I just gave in and bought 12 and hope I don't regret that choice. So this is the pencil. I have one out and sharpened and ready to go. We'll see if the hype is worth it. I'll probably do a video on them later. There's a quick bad sketch using the pencil. I need to work with it more. I don't, I guess I don't have an opinion yet. All right, next is Jerry's Artorama. I picked up a set which had these three items in it. The Strathmore Mixed Media 64 page journal. Mine was a little beat up. But again, I'm this the paper is really nice. It's 90 pound vellum cotton fiber paper. Has a, a light texture to it. It also came with an ellipse comb sharpener. I like the comb sharpener, so it was $26.95, I think, for all these items together. This is a very plasticky um, sharpener. And the Faber Castell Graphite Aqua Aquarelle. I believe I got one or two of these in something else, but I really wanted to try the whole set since I really like um, watercolor graphite. And I think this sketchbook alone for the 8x5 by 11, if I have a price handy, I'll put it up on the screen. But this was a super sale for the pencils. You also get a number six Faber-Castell brush with this set. I'm going to do the swatching in my book. The Faber-Castell Aquarelle Graphite or Graphite Aquarelle Pencils, the Strathmore Mixed Media, and a Coom Ellipse Eraser. This is a 100% cotton acid-free journal, and that's what I'm looking for. Is something a sketchbook or something that can take multimedia so that can handle gouache and watercolor and liquid graphite and ink and so I'm still searching for that 
I have several favorites right now. I'm doing watercolor month on an etcher watercolor sketchbook and I'm really liking that paper. I so far don't have too many complaints about the Paul Rubens sketchbook. So Strathmore 500 series I really want to take a look at. So this gave me an opportunity plus to get a full set of the Aquarelle Faber-Castell pencils. And with my hunt for the perfect sketchbook for me, this is the Stillman and Burn. I've heard good things and I've heard bad things. And I want to try it out for, this is a cold press surface. You get 26 sheets. It's a little bit of a textured paper. Nice thick paper. Here's the paper in the 500 series Strathmore hardcover journal. In comparison, so this is 270 GSM and this is 190 GSM. So definitely thicker paper here. This is again, they're both mixed media because I want something that can take wet and dry watercolor ink. And if it takes watercolor, it usually takes gouache. I also have poster paint that I'm looking forward to trying. So now I have these two sketchbooks to try out and figure out what works well with my different mediums that I prefer. I really like the square size, the seven and a half square size of this. But I haven't really settled on a style that I want to do, and I'm not sure this format will work forever, but I definitely liked it for February Art Challenge. So we'll see. Maybe I'll just use this type of book for Art Challenges. Jerry's Artorama was having some super sale on water mediums and supplies. And I picked up the Sterling Edwards one and a half glazing and blending brush. It had been on my wish list forever. So I was excited to pick that up. Nice the candle for doing what I mean you could also do some washes. Great for clouds and other things. So it had been on my wish list, and with their super sale, I was able to pick it up for the price I first saw it a couple years ago for. So I grabbed it because it's been higher priced ever since. I also picked up this. This was a spur of the moment. Original Incredible Nib. Ideal for applying liquid frisket, watercolor, acrylic, tempera, gouache, silk and fabric paints. Great precision and control. Points stay firm and I can't, I'm not sure if it's wood, wood points seem a little rough, but it's called the Incredible Nib and it was on sale. So I wanted to try that. Because it says it could be used for clay as well. Treat the nib just like you would a fine brush. Clean it frequently by rinsing it in clear water during and after use. To reshape points and sharp edges, let the nib dry thoroughly. Place an emery board or fine sandpaper on a firm surface and stroke the nib against the sandpaper at the proper angle. So it doesn't come with much information on it. Not even what it's made out of. So... Just, you know, another art tool to add to the plethora of art tools to see if it makes my life easier. I did pick up some bamboo and another assorted pack of trading cards just to try more techniques on different cards and see which works best. The last thing I picked up during their aqua sale was a set of Maymary Blue watercolors. 
They have been on my list as a color to try. Modern primary colors along with burnt umber and burnt sienna. I think I actually meant to buy the raw umber, but so the texture of these is really weird it is they're they're kind of thick and gummy and remember this isn't the best paper they're really gummy like it remind they remind me of of Turner watercolors. So I'm going in with them at full strength here. These had been on my wish list and Yeah, these are an interesting consistency. They're definitely not a consistency I'm particularly thrilled with. And hopefully that's not going to be the case long term because these are expensive paints. And as I said, they've been on my wish list for quite a while. I'm a little disappointed in them at this point, just how they went on this paper. And granted, this is really cheap paper, really thin paper. It's just swatch something out kind of paper. And they also aren't staying wet in the palette. They're drying pretty quickly. And I don't have that problem usually with puddles of watercolor. So... I'm going to have to read a little bit more about these and so what is supposed to be wonderful about the May Mary blue watercolors is the purity of the pigment that with the gum Arabic is the total of the mixture. So it's just transparent pigment. No blending powders, no additives, and this line of watercolors is supposed to be have the highest transparency. So you're going to have good results when blending. But as I said, they're they're a very kind of sticky, gummy paint so far. You know, I may not be getting my um, water ratio quite right. So it'll be interesting to play around with these. I really like how they're drying. but the texture is just different. So, so I hope I can learn to work with the texture of the pigment itself. Yeah, this is bad water to try, or bad paper to try to lift on. And I'm blobbing it up. So, there you go. Mm -hmm. 
And again, I just want to show you their texture and how quickly they dry in the pan. Mayberry blue, watercolors, and last I have from Julia K Art Studios. Look at this cute packaging. All right, we have seven new paints from Julia. We have Rosa. I love that she went with just the simple oops. got the Harry Potter or the Harry red from her houses set. That's Harry. Now I did get an incomplete Ginny because she had a, a second, basically, because I really wanted to try the color. So as you can see, it's not as full and I didn't pay as much for it, but it's a second. Um, I just really wanted to try Harry and Ginny together, of course. So. So don't look at this one and think that's the quality of her paints. It is not, it is a second. With some begging and pleading for a second. Okay, maybe not that much. I just asked her if she had any seconds laying around. So if she's out of the color, it doesn't hurt to ask her. This is Ellen. Anton, and I believe Anton is a second as well, but I'm not sure. I don't remember. There was one other one that I got because it, she didn't have a listing for it, and I asked if she had any of it lying around because I wanted to use it for a project. Bjorn. And if you remember, I have the houses set. This is not part of the houses, but it is another brown color to add because I will be painting more houses. Here's Bjorn. Nice brown. And Britta. With metallics, remember you kind of want to give them a little time to soften and mix in the metallic pieces. Her colors re-wet just wonderfully. Now Ellen in person so far looks really purple, but that could be just the, how it's pigmented. All right, make sure you get all the juiciness on the camera. I love Matilda so much that I wanted to try another one of her pinks. So I picked up, which one was this? The Rosa. Now Ellen is kind of a plum. I'm just trying it again for my own benefit. So kind of a gold
Oh my goodness, that's so gorgeous. And this is Jenny. Look at that red. mix them. That was why I really wanted to try these two together. I'm also trying a little bit of Ginny with the pink Rosa. Let's see how that turns out. So again, very different colors than my last swatches, but very beautiful, very beautiful. Look at the gold and Anton. Look at the purple sparkle in Ellen. Look at Rosa, kind of has a purple hue to it. And just the nice base of sparkle in Brita. And then Harry's almost like a oxblood red, kind of a really deep red brown. And Ginny is just a gold. And together they're really pretty. We'll see if we get that gold effect when it dries. And I hope you can see those effects. Just lovely colors. Like, I don't know what I'm going to use them for. They're just lovely colors. Beautiful colors. And if you're interested in the pigment information, Julia K Studios also provides that. And the last item that I will just quickly show you is I have... The kids only let's make art art box arrived in the mail today and I'm just gonna show briefly that we have six acrylic paints we have our pack of paper in this one we also get a little Hot, as well as a bag of as well as a bag of goodies so we get pens and swabs and brushes and a rock for a project let's make art for kids I'll put a code below if you're interested in maybe picking this up it's $35 and it's almost enough for two kids. Now, like this month, they do not have a second rock or little flower pot. So you would have to pick those up or have something like that on hand. But most of the paper projects, you have enough paper to make either smaller pieces or you usually get two, at least two pieces of paper per project. The box runs $35 on the Let's Make Art set. And this was the August box. So that arrived this week. So very exciting. I love the box. I love the activities. I love that you get all the projects already pre-planned. So I don't have to come up with anything. 
I don't I don't have to come up with separate activities and they have like activity pages um, and lessons moon phases it's it's a great little art box and it comes with the activity ideas and for me that's the biggest thing I struggle with I know what I want to do with my own art but to sit down with the kids and do an activity that's appropriate for their age level I was really excited and just think that as you go if you don't use this but maybe make photocopies or you know use it for art ideas you can have a whole shelf full of these magazines with art ideas for kids and there's videos to go along with these so it makes it even better. $35 is a lot, but you get a lot of paper, a lot of supplies. So overall, I, for me, it's the ideas that really got me on this box to try it out at least. And I decided to do three months of trying this out and seeing if it works for my family. So let's make art, kids only box. Let's make something fun. August box so they ship out usually the week of the 18th so you get them just before the next month and the videos don't go live until the month I know for their other boxes that the videos come out weekly so if you don't have the videos up yet then you still can do the activities it's just kind of fun maybe to have them follow along with the video all right, so that's the other thing that arrived this week. So that's our art haul for the end of July, beginning of August. Let me know in the comments below which supplies you like, which supplies you own, if there's anything interesting that you'd like to try and also let me know what things you've picked up in the last few weeks and because I love to hear about the supplies you get as well. So thank you for watching. I'm Ari. This is Shamelessly Creative and we just played with the supplies that came in our art haul. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Stay well, stay safe, and go get creative. Bye.